Hi, this morning it is about flexible assemblies and uh, the ability to actually create this spring which adjusts itself according to the position of the damper. So in this particular case if we move the damper and update and move it back and update, the spring moves. Now the spring is actually, the thing that's doing it is the fact that the helix which is creating the rib so if I go into there that helix has actually got a height definition defined with a parameter and the rib obviously follows the helix now in fact the parameter that's creating that is in fact in this sketch and that sketch is connected to these two external surfaces so this dimension changes according to where these surfaces move to now what my colleague has done is actually introduced a parameter at the top which is adjusting where the top lock nut goes and we've got a number of connections there, I'll put it back to what Ben had already set it to and update the assembly and the spring now it stays with the bottom uh, the nut moves to the top and the spring changes length now when you put that into an assembly which I've done here, a very simple assembly just update this obviously what you can see is that first of all that nut moved up but what's not happening <coughs> is the um, the bottom of the, the the spring isn't moving to the new position so if we just move this slightly oops it's a little wrong level. <coughs> so in this little assembly, the, I've put the front shock in context with just some bits and pieces that are, are either fixed, that little lump there is fixed, and this piece is floating about. So if we just drop the robot on there and pick the. Just put it on somewhere and pick this, we can actually move the spring around. But what doesn't happen is that the spring doesn't update, and the reason is because its its context is in here. So if we check the context of this assembly, uh, say that piece, that front shock is the context is actually this main assembly here, and it's got a number of links to these two surfaces which are here within its assembly so what we need to do is figure out what it's linking to and if I do that in context with my test rig the uh, spring, let's have a look, where's that? it's here this sketch which is defining the length has actually got a constraint here which is projecting off a face that is in the other context so if I reconnect it to this face it changes that changes the context ok that come out of there and then we will do an update Hopefully, the spring moves to it. Now the context is actually within this model. So if we check the links on this, on this spring, the front spring is now in context of this test rig, linking the same things together. So that's how that one actually works.
Now the reason that this particular assembly is able to move inside another one is that this little symbol on the, um, the top level indicates that it's flexible and you can only make it flexible when it's open in its own window and you check the properties of it and under mechanical behavior we've made everything flexible that means all of these connections are flexible except for the fix in there now once that happens and it's inside this other assembly when that front shock is actually inserted into another assembly it actually creates uh, all of these flexible overloaded engineering connections and that's the reason it actually uh, behaves itself. Okay, thank you.